Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, providing more than 41,000 jobs in the production of wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details at ChooseWood.com. This is St. Louis on the Air from St. Louis Public Radio. I'm Elaine Cha. What are current staffing levels for bus drivers? Yeah, that's it. And, and these are facts. We have reduced service. Um, it's not money. It is strictly labor. Mm -hmm. And we need to be sure to move those labor rates as best we can so we can restore that service. And I, I think it's a fair criticism. Getting 77 applicants, you know, on August the 12th, hey, that's good, okay? Yeah. It's not good enough, though. In July 2022, a 1 in 1,000 year flooding event hit St. Louis. 25% of normal rainfall for the entire year came down in a matter of just 12 hours. The deluge caused $18 million in flood-related damages to St. Louis's Metrolink light rail network. To ensure climate disaster funding across the U.S. would be part of the federal budget, Representative Cori Bush, along with outgoing Republican Senator Roy Blunt and other prominent Democratic members of Congress, took action. And in January 2023, President Biden's year-end omnibus budget approved $213.9 million for climate relief purposes through the Federal Transit Administration, or FTA. Here to discuss how Bi-State Development plans to utilize incoming FTA money and to share updates on Metro staffing levels, bus routes, and its secure platform plan, we welcome Toby Roach, President and CEO of Bi-State Development. Toby, welcome back to the show. Good afternoon, Elaine. Really good to be here. Great. Let's start with what Bi-State bi Development is for those who are not uh, aware. What is it and what does it do, Toby? So literally, it is a bi-state, essentially, special project unit of government, okay? So that happens by a federal compact that enables us to uh, operate in both sides of the river, in Missouri and Illinois. And obviously, what most people know about what we do is uh, through the transit system. Mm -hmm. We run a, a transit system in both states. But of course, we also operate... Uh, the tram up to the Gateway Arch, which is, uh, I like to call our excitement division. Okay. Um, but, and also run the downtown airport uh, in Illinois. Okay. So there's quite a lot that falls under under your purview. Yep. Now, let's talk about the federal funding. We'll go back to this time last year. What kind of damage and service interruptions has Metro Transit incurred in the wake of last summer's devastating flash floods through our region? Yeah, it was just, a, I mean, uh, unbelievable, unless I had actually seen it. Um, I think it would be, it's almost hard to describe. Mm -hmm. we, we were inundated with that water and through a very key uh, part of our alignment, uh, especially around the Forest Park Station, um, where both the red and blue lines come together. Essentially, our right-of-way was inundated and it flooded not only our tracks, but we lost uh, an entire light rail vehicle. Um, which was flooded b um, by these just unprecedented thunderstorms. Um, and we've been reacting ever since, trying mm -hmm. to get back on our feet. Um, my crews did extraordinary work to get us back um, to at least a, a fundamental simple operation, but we're not back 100%. And the good news is when we called our federal partners for help, uh, they answered the phone. Yeah. There. And so trains haven't been able to run as frequently basically, mm -hmm. as they did before the flooding. And then you've mentioned getting some help from partners at the, the federal level. And we talked about how much money has been allocated for that. Mm -hmm. um, Representative Cory Bush, along with other members of Congress, secured about $28 million mm -hmm. in federal That's aid. Right. And that was to cover Metrolink repairs. Mm -hmm. What exactly will the money be used for? Sure. So 
one of the, not only did we lose a light rail vehicle, but one of the really key components is we had a very key station house that was inundated. And of course, it's very important from a safety standpoint because this literally manages the movement of trains and of course, a conflict point potentially between trains. Um, So very important safety certification through there. And that signal house was completely inundated with water and was a total loss. Well, one of the things that the federal government has asked us to do and our FTA partners is fine, they will support us with funding, but be sure when we rebuild uh, these component trees that they are rigorous if, for instance, the disaster were to happen again. So one of the things that we are doing to make our systems more rigorous is we are actually building that station house up on a steel platform so that it would be above any Mm. floodwaters in the future. Mm -hmm. Uh, Unfortunately, that's added a little bit of time, um, but we we hope to have that station house in place here in September when we be back to 100% operation Mm -hmm. and moving trains uh, completely through at speed. Okay. Now, Mm -hmm. getting that funding, it's not coming all at once from what I understand. How is it being dispersed or doled out? Right. So, of course, um, we are stewards of the public money. So we have to, in no matter what we do, we have the obligation to uh, do fair and competitive bid processes in just about all that we do. In some rare cases where we have an emergency expenditure, we may go through our board of commissioners and ask for what's called a sole source procurement, in which case we have to document the, the justification for that. And we've done a little bit of that in order to move the process forward. But fundamentally, what we do is we, we advance most of these payments and then ask for reimbursement from our federal partners That way, our federal partners are sure that, of course, that the local initiatives are there. We have that financial capacity, and we're moving on the project. Mm -hmm. Now, we do have a listener question Mm -hmm. um, that pertains to bus routes. Mm -hmm. It's Evie Hemphill, St. Louis resident and longtime Metro Transit user. Mm -hmm. And Evie writes, every time a quarterly service change occurs, St. Louis bus service seems to be further cut back along uh, including along some of the system's most heavily used lines, such as the number 70 grand. Mm-hmm. There were further frequency cuts earlier this summer, for example. And yet um, in 2021, you told St. Louis on the air that the reduction in service would be temporary and that transit service would be restored in spring and summer of 2022. Um, Evie continues, the restoration of service that you assured folks of in the fall of 2021 has clearly not happened. How do you explain that disparity? And why should riders trust more recent assurances related to service levels? So that's completely accurate that, that we have had strictly because of labor shortages. We have had to make some adjustments in in our bus routes and sometimes Metrolink routes, mostly in the weekends and the late nights. And of course, we're doing our best to dig out of essentially what is an employment crisis. Um, We, I certainly would like it if if I could announce that we had, that we're gonna work our best towards getting these uh, services restored. So I think what the public very reasonably, including Evie, um, uh, should expect of me and of Metro Transit is that they see us taking action as best we can in all aspects. Mm -hmm. And for instance, making an extraordinary uh, $5,000 signing bonus now available to all employees. We are having job fairs every single um, weekend just about, but specifically on the second Saturday of every every, uh, month. Uh, We also just went under a three-year contract with our uh, longtime uh, 788 ATU um, union employees who have been out there uh, struggling, working hard. Uh, That includes a bonus uh, over that three-year contract, which uh, is right around $7,000, so a comparable bonus. So I think what the public uh, should demand of me and uh, of everybody is that we are doing everything we can to restore that service associated with the the moment of scarcity. The moment of scarcity is not money. It is strictly labor. Mm -hmm. And we need to be sure to move those labor rates as best we can so we can restore that service. And I I think it's a fair criticism. Mm -hmm. Evie, thank you for... uh 
contacting us with uh, that comment. And on that note, do you use public transit in the St. Louis region? What updates or changes would you like to see to the system? If you don't use public transit, why not? Maybe what could change that? We're talking with Talby Roach, the president and CEO of By State Development, and we want to hear your comments and questions. Give us a call at 314-382-8255. That's 314-382-TALK. You can also email us at stlpr.org. So going back to Metrolink and what has happened, uh, at what point will Metro users on the the rider side, obviously, mm-hmm. when will they begin to see um, those federal funds being used? So, so literally, they may have seen them if they were there at two in the morning uh, a couple of, w- of weeks ago mm-hmm. when we were pulling out the old signal house. Um, and the reason why I just mentioned that anecdotally is that I have had crews out in the middle of the night doing these repairs. And, you know, one thing that I always like to emphasize is, look, we have um, right around a thousand frontline employees, including the operators who who are out running those 4.30 a.m. shifts, who are out pulling a signal house and and after revenue service um, at two in the morning. Uh, trying to restore service in every aspect. Um, look, I think through the pandemic, these are these men and women are the are the heroes, um, and we need to support them. Um, and I think the point on the labor shortage and moving moving up, uh, both labor rates and bonus rates, quality of life issues, all of those are on the table and should be on the table. Mm-hmm. So associated with their hard work. Um, not only, although we have uh, a limited uh, use right now on, uh, for instance, we're running at cab speed, so reduced speed right now through that Forest Park station on the blue line. So what will happen is once the signal house is in place and fully operating, then we'll be back to regular speed. So much quicker service, mm. um, and it'll be a nice improvement. Uh, it's, you know, about two and a half minute. Uh, to five minute delay right now that just with the train moving slower, but uh, it'll be an improvement in service. Okay. Mm-hmm. And when is it that all the repairs using that funding will be completed by? So I feel it'll be by the end of September. Okay. Um, and, you know, that does depend on, um, for instance, these systems have to be safety certified um, after they are in place. We do a lot of testing on, you know, uh, Uh, train sight lines and the rigorous uh, parts of the system to be sure because it's very important that these trains operate um, safely Mm -hmm. Um, and it will have to be independently reviewed by our state safety safety oversight board Um, but i think that at the end of september is a reasonable um, goal um, and we're working we're working our tails off to try to make that happen okay now, you had spoken earlier about the loss, complete loss of one of the, the rail cars. And mm-hmm. Metro Tran- Transit is set to receive a little over $196 million in federal money from the Biden-backed infrastructure funding bill that passed in 2021. Now, that is money that has been allocated mm-hmm. specifically for the purchase of new light rail cars, correct? That's right. Okay. Isn't this exciting news, <laughs> right? Um, so so part of this is building the momentum. So, of course, our, our system is getting older. Uh, uh, fundamentally, it's 30 years old. So I have several cars that have over a million miles on, on their odometer at this point. As a matter of fact, we have several light rail vehicles that have over 2 million miles on them. So... Mm-hmm. Look, I always uh, think it's great when the Secretary of Transportation shows up and takes a look at our system, but he was here for a reason. And he's here because we've shown to be a viable partner who gets the most out of what we and what we do. Mm -hmm. And so the good part about that is that then they've also stepped up. So we are in final negotiations with the manufacturer of the new light rail vehicles, which will be Siemens. Siemens, these are manufactured in Sacramento, California, Mm -hmm. Um, and we are negotiating right now, and we'll be somewhere between uh, 48 and 52 Mm -hmm. new light rail vehicles with the um, 
latest in uh, in technology, including uh, n- neat features like Wi-Fi and you know great new camera systems and so on. So and very exciting time for us at Metro Transit. Will it have a new car rail smell? <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Just like the new cars. What look? But it but it's always nice. Look, I my team should be applauded for what they get out of the existing vehicle. But it, ex- eventually, it needs to be upgraded, and and folks need to deserve to see these investments. What's really neat about these investments is that these are investments in regular people. Mm-hmm. You know, through the pandemic, yes, we've suffered in ridership, but the fundamental people who still uh, are on transit are those f- people who still make St. Louis work. They made St. Louis work through the pandemic. They were still getting to hospitals, getting to grocery stores, still making things happen. And, you know, that's the lifeblood of transit. Mm -hmm. And we need to remember, if there's one silver lining of the pandemic, it is the silver lining of real work. Real work makes our city city move. And I, I love to think that transit is a part of that. We're going to take a very quick break, but we'll be back shortly to continue this conversation. And we want to hear from you. Do you use public transit in the St. Louis region? What updates or changes would you like to see to the system? If you don't use public transit, why not? And what could change that? We'll continue this conversation with Toby Roach, the president of CEO, president and CEO, that is, of Bi State Development. This is St. Louis on the Air on St. Louis Public Radio. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, providing more than 41,000 jobs in the production of wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details at choosewood.com. Now back to our conversation with Talby Roach, president and CEO of Buy State Development, an economic development agency whose work on both sides of the Mississippi River includes management of Metro Transit. Before the break, I invited you all to call in or email us, and I neglected to give you the way to do that. I was moving as fast as those new light rail trains. Uh, please give us a call at 314 382 8255. That's 314-382-TALK. You can also email us at talk at stlpr.org. So before the break, we were talking, Talbia, about the um, the cars, uh, the light rail cars. Let's talk now a little bit more about the staffing, which is something that you brought up. And Metro approved a, a contract, a new contract just last week with bus drivers and train operators who are part of Amalgamated Transit Union Local 788. So tell us what it is about um, this deal that you feel is going to raise staffing um, levels among bus and train operators as well as the maintenance and clerical workers. Sure. That that contract is critical to the overall labor environment. Not only are we trying to retain our, not only are we trying to attract new folks, but of course retaining our existing great employees and being sure that they have uh, a contract in place uh, where they feel, you know, look, making a living and and enjoying their life in St. Louis uh, makes a difference. Mm -hmm. Um, so, I, look, I got to applaud um, the leadership of uh, 788 and ATU. Look, we ground through that contract and figured it out. You know, what a, what a great partner they, they were in coming up with this contract. But there's key elements here, one of which is essentially a combination bonus over the three-year period of time of nearly $7,000. Now, that can be taken in a hybrid, either in cash or also in 401k benefits. Um because these are great long-term jobs here that we have at Metro Transit. You can raise a family and you can do well. You can live in the very neighborhoods that we support. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, I'm very proud of that. And and so should our union partners be proud of that. 
but also um, with our union partners, we were able to negotiate some some key bonuses within within this contract, and some of those are in route differentials. And sometimes that may be, let's say, a late night route where we were having trouble getting a drivers to show up for. We would give, let's say, a seventy-five cents an hour bonus for a late night shift, or, or for instance. Um, there are some key routes. Uh, Evie mentioned in her question the number 70 grand, which is our number one bus route. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, it's really key that we are sure that those fundamental pieces of core service are safe, reliable, and that they are supported. And part of that is, of course, supporting our employees, supporting our employees, not only of our frontline transit workers who are the operators, but of course our maintenance team and everybody involved. And so we're thrilled with this contract. We think um, these, these, this is a crisis, a labor crisis of which we should employ multiple tools, including our existing employees and that existing contract. Mm-hmm. I think it's absolutely key to digging out of this hole. And there have been cuts uh, to bus service mm-hmm. because of the driver shortage. Mm-hmm. Um, Jason had tweeted, you know, make metro routes go twice as often, you know, mm-hmm. half the wait times. Mm-hmm. What are current staffing levels for bus drivers? Yeah, that's it. And, and these are facts. We have reduced service. Um, uh, in June, basically 3.5%. Uh, there was a reduction in the June 23 service reduction. And 3.5% may not sound like a lot, but boy, it sure is a lot when someone is waiting for a bus, as I think it was Jason mentioned, where they're waiting, let's say, 40 minutes instead of 20 minutes. Th- those are key differences mm-hmm. to the everyday folks who are going out there. And Metrolink gets a lot of the focus, but nearly 65% of our service really is bus related. Okay. So the bus system is key to healthy transit in St. Louis. We Mm -hmm. need to remember that. So we are still right around 200 employees short in a combination of mechanics and operators, uh, operators going across Metrolink, Metrobus, and Call a Ride. But we've been encouraged at several of our recent fam, uh, um, hiring events. We just had one in August the 12th. We had nearly 77 applicants at that um, at that 10 to 2 Saturday. Uh, we did it at Barnes Care on Manchester Road in the city. We tendered 52 offers. And we did it at Barnes Care because, of course, we have operators and we have to do uh, drug testing and standard uh, police checks that anyone operating a several ton transit bus would need to do. Yes. Um, so we found that by by partnering with um, uh, folks like Barnes Care, we've been able to do a one stop shop essentially for hey, what is a new job? Mm-hmm. And we have good jobs out there, and we'll be doing another hiring event this time out in the county. Um, And that's going to be September the 9th in the Westport area, again, at Barnes Care at 11501 Page. Um, Just a great opportunity for terrific jobs, long-term careers at Metro Transit. Okay. And in relation to that, Anna, a disability Mm -hmm. advocate in Mm -hmm. St. Louis, emails that she's interested to know whether the hiring bonus has helped so far. And if not, what do you need to do? Uh, great question. So the answer is yes, it has helped. And as I mentioned, getting 77 applicants, you know, on August the 12th, hey, mm-hmm. that's good. Okay. Yeah. It's not good enough, though. Mm-hmm. We need to press every single button we can. Uh, we have had the same kind of service reductions to the disabled community, as as mentioned. And of course, these are devastating. You know, these are these are the folks of most need, uh, most important that they get to their to their medical appointments and so on through call a ride service. So we will now pivot, for instance, to the call a ride contract. We expect to uh, enhance the same economics that we have for our 788 contract. And what we need to do is press every single button. There's no one single. Um, solution. It has to be seen as multiple solutions as we move through this uh, frustrating economic situation. Mm -hmm. It's going to take some time, but I think what what everyone and all our our customers should expect is that we're going to show up and we're going to answer questions. 
we're going to have goals to get through this um, crisis. And, and I sure would like it to be sooner, not later, as Evie points out. Um, I'm not going to make my goal every time, mm-hmm. but we sure are going to try. Yeah. Neil is asking uh, about turnstiles. What is Bi State mm-hmm. doing to secure turnstiles and make riding less accessible to those who don't pay? Well, so, of course, one of the things that we are doing is is – uh, we are working on the SPP project, also known as the Secure Platform Plan. So we will be adding a new gated system to the entire Metrolink system. Uh, this is a $52 million project, which I am very, very proud uh, that we have been able to garner uh, $10.7 million of private sector investment in a public asset Um Look, this is extraordinary in any city, but certainly ex- extraordinary in St. Louis. And look, the fact is, is that we need to look at safety and security in our community. Um, and that includes the community of transit mm-hmm. and how do people feel safe and secure. Um, so as a matter of fact, we just put out a bid on the first four stations, which will be a pilot or beta test on those stations. They will start in Illinois, um, and bids are due on that package uh, September the 5th. So Mm -hmm. we're very excited about these details. Look, the point is, is that we're going to try new things at Metro Transit, okay? We're going to try to be, pay attention to what the public is asking for and be bold when we have to, whether that's through employment bonuses, whether that's looking realistically at what the public is asking for. Public's asking for better safety, and we need to deliver it. Mm -hmm. And then the last note here on turnstiles. Mm -hmm. Are there any in place now? And if so, where? They are not in place yet. Okay. (laughs) Okay. So we we still are an open system. Okay. And uh, so, but that project, which works in many different phases, will be completely in implementation on all of the 39 Metrolink stations Mm -hmm. by the end of uh, summer of 2025, and it will come through in a phasal approach. Uh, first, we're doing, of course, a, what what would be known as a beta test or a, a test um, in some of our simpler stations to be sure that all of the electronics and so on work. Um, and then we'll be moving forward on a phased approach, um, and that's in design right now and engineering. Mm-hmm. And where will that phase, that first phase, happen? So the first, the first stations are actually in Illinois, um, actually centering around the, the Washington Park Station. Um, and quite frankly, uh, we, we looked at doing those uh, stations because of their availability as far as, um, A, they're a little simpler as far as their design, but also uh, the fiber optic availability and some of the communications av- availability, which are key components. So that when, for instance, you swipe, and ultimately, when we have a new fare system, you swipe mm-hmm. your phone across of the reader, and then, of course, the gate would open. Um, we need to be sure that all those communications are rigorous. And so uh, the Illinois locations were the, were the best place that my team selected to start. Mm-hmm. We're getting a lot of traffic here uh, mm-hmm. with, uh, <laughs> with notes from readers. We received an email from mm-hmm. someone who says, the eight is the bus route most applicable to my work and social responsibilities. Mm-hmm. Although this line connects two of the city's biggest parks and three of the city's biggest commercial districts, it only runs once per hour. Mm-hmm. Metro reps have cited low ridership as a reason for further cuts and lack of revenue. But it's proven that when buses run frequently and reliably, everyone, regardless of socioeconomic status, will ride. Why not make buses on primary routes truly frequent, for example, coming every seven minutes, getting us closer to the public transit system that citizens can rely on and buy into? A terrific comment. <laughs> and and I, I love it. I'd love to run more frequently. And, and let's be very clear about what is, um, this is a public service. This is not about making money. As a matter of fact, our end uh, deliverable is not profit, it is service. And so we need to look at transit within that lens. But of course, I also have to show up to those, uh, to county councils and St. Clair County <laughs> Council and and uh, of course the board of aldermen and be sure that I can pass a budget. So 
there always is a little bit of balance there. But um, whenever somebody comes to me and says, well, you should do things like the private sector. No, we're not the private sector. Mm -hmm. Because the pyramid is different. Our pyramid is in service. And this is an excellent point. It is absolutely accurate that more frequent service does build ridership. Um, but I am frustrated and in a difficult situation now, literally with our driver availability and labor availability. It's not a cost uh, issue. It is about uh, labor, and we are taking action. Uh, I'm proud of those actions, including that three-year contract and including our bonus. And we're going to continue to push on those bases. Mm-hmm. Nancy Kirkwood also writes that she'd like to see federal funding used to increase the frequency of bus runs within the city. She mm-hmm. says, my son and many others are dependent on buses to and from work. Mm-hmm maybe pay bus drivers more with the money coming. And she wants Metro to stop running empty large buses and use multi-passenger vans on light routes. Mm -hmm. So there's two different, obviously we have all different types of uh, rolling stock, um, all the way going down from call a ride to now we do have in place a new uh, 30 and 35 foot smaller uh, transit bus. Uh, And then of course the largest, which is a, well, actually a 40-foot bus, and then we do have a 60-foot bus on the um, on the Grand, 70 mm-hmm. Grand, which is a fully articulated, completely electric uh, a new flyer bus. Toby Roach is president and CEO of Bi State Development, the agency that manages Metro Transit here in St. Louis City and County and the Metro East area of Illinois. Toby, thank you for talking with us today. Elaine, thank you. I love talking about transit. This episode was produced by Emily Woodbury with audio engineering and podcast design by Aaron Dorr. Our executive producer is Alex Hoyer. St. Louis on the Air is a production of St. Louis Public Radio. Understanding starts here. St. Louis on the Air proudly supports local artists by using music from Life Creative Group. Do you find yourself regularly listening to episodes of St. Louis on the Air? Suggest us to a friend you think might enjoy our conversations. And leave us a review and rating on Apple Podcasts on the App Store. It's the simplest way to help people discover our show. Thank you. St. Louis Public Radio is a member-supported service of the University of Missouri-St. Louis. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, committed to conservation and careful management of the state's forests to make them more resilient and better habitats for wildlife. Choosewood.com.